The script reads like a grade B movie. A young, tough motorcycle gang member, constantly in trouble for punching people, is taken aside, advised to do his boxing in a ring from now on. His life is turned around, and the quest for the World Heavyweight Championship is on. This story happens to be real. The motorcycle gang is the Hells Angels, the heavyweight hopeful is John LoFranco, and the reporter is Frank Anthony. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Stop him! That's life on the block, so to say. They have never been considered your basic model citizens. They've always been considered at the least iconoclastic, at the worst, mean. Still, many others have picked up what they have dropped off along the American cultural landscape down through the years. The motorcycle and leather jacket, the long hair and pierced ear, the neck chain and cocaine. And now the Hells Angels are roaring forth with yet another controversial contribution, just when we thought we had them figured out. His name is John LoFranco. To Charter Brothers across America and Europe, he is John the Baptist. He is a six foot, two inch, 210 pound amateur heavyweight boxer heading for the pros. And through him, we have an opportunity to learn more about two worlds of violence boxing and the Hells Angels, only one of which is disciplined. We do quite a few other things, you know. And it's not just uh, like everybody thinks, you know, murder, rape, and drugs, you know. <laughs> One good reason the Hells Angels are misunderstood is that they really don't care to be understood. To an outsider, training for the Golden Gloves is a lifestyle tending more towards the monastic than the motorcycle. It's not a problem because uh, Hells Angels don't have a set lifestyle, you know, like so many people have a stereotype to be. Uh, we are just, you know, out drinking in the bars, partying, which I used to do, you know, my share of, but. Right now, if I plan on winning in, in, you know, boxing and going anywhere, achieving anything, I have to live the life of a boxer. So that is my life. I'm still a hell's angel. Okay, champ. Oh, you got him? Let's go ahead and beat his brains out, you know what I mean? Okay? Good luck, you know what I mean? I know you're going to beat this Thank guy you, bad. Thank you. You're going to beat him bad, you know? I'm going to win. Make him bleed, make him bleed. It takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication. You have to be dedicated to this sport, otherwise you will not go anywhere. John LaFranco? Yeah, right there. Oh. It's like you can't, you can't be out of the bar, you know, hanging out and get up the next morning and run and then at three or four o'clock in the afternoon box, you just cannot do it. You, know, you have to keep certain hours and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I've been in lots of ballroom brawls. I am notorious for bars. <laughs> 208 and a half. Where do you want to go from here? All the way to the top. <laughs> if I can do it, you know. Uh, uh, you know, everybody wants to be there. You know, if you're if you're in the box and everyone wants that, you know. What did you look like when you went there? I was about to with two ponytails. I wouldn't cut my hair. You know, and I want to go Olympics for that. I didn't cut me out of it, but you know, like, uh, there's a lot of things going on there. Yeah. And things have changed for the best, man. There's a lot of uh, prejudice or undercurrents or whatever. Now it's easier. But as long well as the fighter wins, it always makes it easier. Tell me where it's up now. Who you fight, Johnny? Ben. Uh, is, is there any that do that? The tall black guy. They call oh, the guy they favor. No. Going to win, John? Yes, I'm going to win. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I'll take him. I'll take him. No problem. I like John. Come on, John. Come on, John. Boxing is a thing where your body and your mind becomes very clean. I'm healthy. I feel good. You know, I just feel good. Let's go. Come on.
like uh, winning a fight? What goes, winning? Yeah, what it's goes not through like it. <laughs> it's not like it. Me winner, the right water will come from. Congratulations. All right. You did good. Yeah. Come on. It was a tough one, though, this time, huh? Yeah. One more. Okay. <laughs> three, three knockouts and one decision. Does it bother you that it was a small back? No, I don't, it don't bother me at all, because... Like I told everybody in the beginning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. You know, I don't know if it's gonna be a knockout or not. You know, you have to be crazy to predict that. He's good, but I'm better. He's a good fighter. What are you gonna do to him in the ring? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. He says you're a good fighter, but he's better. Oh yeah? Oh, we'll see him off You know? <laughs> Tonight, beneath the hot lights and 19,000 fans, the balloon did not burst, but it certainly lost a lot of air. So did John's stomach and ego. After four victories, including three knockouts, the pride of the Angels would get off to a slow start, get clobbered in the second round by his Brooklyn Carding Company opponent, who looked and hit a lot like a young Marciano, and then come back to nearly knock out his opponent, but alas, too late. The heavyweight champion, and as the bell sounded, and as the winner was announced, and as the hand was raised, one fighter had one eye closed, the other held his head high in victory, and to keep the blood in his nose. I lost, uh, you know, like, I said, wow, they're not going to raise my hand. <laughs> it made me only want to fight more. <clears throat> what did some of the pros say about your future in boxing? Well, after the fight, Jerry Cooney came up to Chuck and, uh, he told him, he says, hey, you know, tell, tell your brother that uh, he's a good fighter and that he should keep on, you know, keep on fighting. And that made me feel good. I yeah, that's got you. I felt good after that, you know. I said, even though I lost the fight, when he told me I, it just, you know, it makes you feel good when somebody of his caliber, you know, could see in you good, you know, that you're good. Do any of the fellas say uh, John's no fun anymore or uh, wouldn't they dare not... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they always, they, a, a few of them kid me about, you know, having a drink every once in a while. But then I just remind them and I say, hey, you don't want me to really drink now, do you? <laughs> so overall, for your uh, future, it's a heck of a lot better to do your uh, punching in the ring. Oh, yeah. I agree, yeah. I agree with you. It's, uh, I think you get, you get more out of it, too, you know. No, well, you don't get arrested as often. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. Lo Franco has been scouted by the U.S. Olympic Committee, but he is 25 and anxious to turn pro. The motorcycle rides these days are short and rare. The training sessions long and grueling. How do you feel, John? Great. This is Frank. What's happening, America, continues in a moment.